All right, let's have some fun. I always say that because I got to be honest with you. I'm not seeing the art students having fun these days. I've worked at a lot, of, a fair amount of art schools now, and they're not having fun. I mean, it's stress, and, and the world isn't that stressful. I, mean, I like to pretend it is. All right, this is a painting we started at our school last Thursday, and I thought I'd finish it to show you how to do it. And then I'll do another one, you know, for this Thursday, because we're going to finish it. The reason why we didn't finish it is because we were having a lot of fun. Um, so let's see. The lay-in on this, this is some pretty cool paper. I like it. And uh, so the, the lay-in was a pencil drawing. You can probably see it. It's pretty light. And uh, I put a wash over the top. There's two ways to do it. You can put the wash over the top. And just get your local color, local values. If you don't know what those are, go to the videos. Um, <clears throat> and then work your way in, in like Alla Prima style. Or just go right to Alla Prima style. The problem with Alla Prima style direct is that you're trying to always get rid of the white. And that could be a real bummer. Uh, it just takes time. We're here, you're kind of like almost there. The... The paint I'm using is a mixture. It's Della Rani, and I don't think you can find this anymore. It's a really cool set. So it just kind of folds like that. It's really neat. And it opens up. Yeah, there we go. Um, I hoard art supplies because when I was a kid, I couldn't couldn't afford them. And I just worshipped them. So now, as an adult, I still have that kid mentality. But I, I just I love art supplies. So... I kind of hoard them, but this, and then to this set, you know, I've had for a long time. The, uh, these areas you see squeezed in, this would probably be Windsor Newton, I would think, that I put in there. And then this is in case I wanted to convert it to gouache. You can take any watercolor set and just convert it to gouache by adding opaque white. You know, it's kind of fun. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, Get our little model closer together. I'm working from a photo, but I'm not as interested in copying the actual photo. Unless, of course, I'm doing a portrait, okay? Otherwise, I'm more interested in, in a painting that's just more like, you know, like a pretty painting. Um, I'm going to use green to... Uh, for the shadows and put in a water mask. Try to get this shape as close as I can. Grouping your darks. Make sure we're going here, yeah. And that's really important that the darks get all grouped together. Probably the most mail I've ever gotten was when I said, don't give up an opportunity to dip your brush into something wet. <coughs> and don't. So this area here is wet. So even though I'm putting in local colors and stuff, I can start dipping things like here and put in some, some fun brown. See, and let it flow. Let the water do the job. See that? You just touch it and let the water go. Now here I want to take the shape and bring it down. I'm shaking the brush off stage. So this way. Um, if you're going to shake something, um, probably a good idea not to shake it on YouTube because you'll probably get turned in. But when you see me pull the brush over there, I'm shaking the brush. There we go. So shake off stage, probably a good idea. And then we're gonna pull this over. So this becomes one whole graphic shape. And we'll give her green eyes. Now the light's coming this way, so it'll be a highlight here. So it'll be darker around the eye. 
darker on the highlight, lighter on the other side. spray there. I don't know if that was the water or the eye cleaner, but if it was the eye cleaner, then we're going to have a very clean painting. Okay, so now I'm going to put in a dark here and let that float. So this is now in a satiny stage. You see it still moves, but it moves real slow. That's pretty, pretty wet, still wet right there. So here is on the other side, but here we want it to be really soft because it's out of focus. So let's keep this area pretty wet. She's looking at you guys. And I don't have anything ridiculous to say. I'm sorry. Let's see what can I come up with for you. Um, I have been inventing something for quite some time. Um, you know, if you you know you go to a deli, and deli is foreplay for Jews. You know, it's kind of where we go to get in the mood. You know, there's nothing sexier than a pastrami sandwich. But the problem is the sandwiches fall apart, and the burgers, you know, they all fall apart. So I invented this thing called edible Velcro. And uh, what you do is it's edible. It's going to be vitamin fortified. It's going to be flavored, you know, I'm still working on that. And what you do is you use it to piece your sandwich together. I think it's brilliant. Um, I'm just kind of looking for the areas where there could be problems, you know, where you have to, like, at the end of everything, you know, say... You know, this product works, except for be careful of this and this, this, you know, the side effects. And I think it's obvious that one of the side effects of this could be constipation because it's, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of kind of keeps everything together. So we could say, you know, edible Velcro, you know, a product that keeps your shit together. But I don't know. That's going to get thrown out of YouTube. All right. So here we go. So we go right here. All right. So that was something silly and ridiculous. Okay. But, you know, we have to because it's my videos. All right, so let's take this water and throw it up here. And then we'll bring it around here. And that will give you your rhythm chart. Go. Go like that. So now we're getting to the satiny stage. So, ooh, look at that. Not so satiny. See how fast it moves?
See, it's still moving really fast. This is good paper. I don't remember where I got it. It's really good. So while this is settling, then you want to go to another area. You see. Let's see. What time is this? Oh, it's been 10 minutes. Not too bad. So. Pull this tone down. So that's a rhythm chart. So we give her an eyelid. There's an old saying, you paint with a pencil and you draw with the brush. See how I'm letting the I'm letting all of the the water do the job. Well that's drying. Pull some tone around. There's a side plane. And then we want to see the shape right there. It's painting into the negative shape. Okay, so time it is. Yeah, 14 minutes. So here's a, see a pretty good lay-in. Now I'm just starting, I'm just working my way out because you know your rhythms and you know your planes. All right, so let's keep going. Okay, let's keep going. So this is all kind of drying, but you see that hard edge down there. You want to be careful with that. So we'll soften that up. Come down here, feel my way down. 
Because you're always adjusting your drawing. The nose is looking a little long. Let's soften that. Be careful with the shadow patterns. Now, the more the strokes go in, and you can see the brush strokes, the older she'll be. You know the shape. So, you want to be careful. So, we want to go really light here. I have our mouth way down there, it's really too, it's too low. So we keep walking all the way down. And there we go. So right now I'm just totally drawing. You want to be careful with the blue because it'll make her look like she has five o'clock shadow. Keep the painting moving. So while this is settling down here, we're gonna put in a half tone right there. As I bump the light. Okay, there's half tone on the side of the face. side of the nose.
So you're always working either on the subject or behind. So here's the cheek, but you don't really want to, you know, it's already pretty light. So I'll start working into the background behind the cheek. When you're doing watercolor, you're painting with probably 80% water, sometimes 90% water. So it's just kind of tinted water is really all it is. See, this is like an area you really wouldn't probably pay much attention to. You may be thinking over here, but just these little tiny stain areas mean a lot. So I'm constantly working the entire painting. Okay, so I'm starting to, starting to
trying to key the painting a little bit more, putting in the darkest darks. So this is a fun brush. This is uh, Klinsky Sable, and this was kind of a house brush from what was Flax in the olden days. Harvey Flax. Harvey was great. This old guy reminded me of my animation teacher. That's why I think I loved him so much. And all Harvey would do is just yell. So I would walk into the store, and he'd yell, Sheldon, is that you? You know, I'm already... You know, I'm working as an account executive. You know, I'm wearing a suit. I'm going there to get some supplies. Is that you, Sheldon? And he's upstairs in his office. I'm like, yeah, Harvey. He goes, go help that customer over there. I'm like, I don't work here, Harvey. He goes, go help that customer. She needs help. So I'd walk over to the customer and I'd say, uh, you know, hey, what are you, you know, what are you looking for? What do you need? And uh, she'd say, well, you know, I'm interested in uh, some watercolor. I said, oh, well, let me show you some stuff. He goes. Don't talk to her sell or something. I'm like, I don't work here, Harvey. Oh, it was great. But boy, did he take care of me. He spoiled me rotten. And I got a lot of good art supplies and I'd go in there and buy my brushes. And this is a, this is their, oh, it's starting to get this. This was their house brush. Such a good brush. So they had their own brands. A lot of the art supply stores back in the old days, you know, they'd have their own brands. You know, it's really cool. I love Harvey. So they did it. They're going to do an advertisement saying that, you know, I kind of stole from it, you know, with my stupid jokes. But they say Harvey, you know, understands Rembrandt because he knew him personally. You know, it was kind of fun. That's kind of like my Michelangelo jokes were taken from that. I steal from everybody. So this is his brush from his art supply store. So it was right in Westwood, you know, right there in the, you know, right, you know, by UCLA, but it was in Westwood. So cool. So I'm putting green next to, you know, red. I'm really having fun. This is called Broken Color. That's the last edge down there. It's not working. I think this is... I have my other one somewhere around here. So this is eye cleaner. Eh, makes the plane. So you can't say that all my artwork is, uh, all my lectures are dirty, because this painting is clean. Sixteen minutes. Oh no. Okay, let's take a look at this. Come back and continue with it.
Okay, let's keep going. So see how strong that is? You just don't panic, just take the brush. Just suck it right back into the brush. Boop, done. And we can pull that paint over here. So that's good. So details on this side, really light on this side, because it's got atmospheric perspective, even in a portrait. Okay, this is, I think, a Winter Newton. Yeah, this is a Winter Newton Series 7. So this is an expensive brush. But it's small. It's a tiny little one. It's number two, it looks like. But still, look at that. Really beautiful. So it's always the same. It's just in a smaller place. So see how loose the painting is? It's super loose. But down here, you know, in the detail, it's equally as loose. It's just in a smaller area. So it's always painterly.
she's wearing an olive green. So I'm just going to take this green and just add purple to it. Olive green is dirty. Just a dirty green. Okay. So that's what she's wearing. That's why we're casting the green up into the face. I like my greens like I like my lectures. Dirty. Okay, here we go. Not really. Okay. Just gonna keep everybody awake. So now the decision is, do we put any kind of background in? We can just put some here, which might be kind of fun. It's going to be a challenge. Hold your breath when you do that. But it kind of puts her into the background. I think that might be it. Okay, and that's a fun little watercolor study. Now, if I take it to the next level, you know, detail, then I have to do it on the whole thing. So that's where it gets difficult. So as Vilpu says, it takes two people to do a painting and it takes uh, one person to do it and one, two people to take it away before you ruin it. So, and uh, yeah, Glenn is the best living artist on the planet today. So. We listen to him. Okay, so this is just a, uh, a watercolor sketch.